Welcome back guys, today we'll look at Paper 2 Variant 21 of the May-June 2023 series. Now as always, I mean this video probably will be quite long so I would recommend watching at 1.25 or even 1.5 speed. Uh, right, question one, four descriptions of stages in the program development life cycle are shown. Draw one line to link each description to its most appropriate program development life cycle stage. Uh, right, says not all, yeah, not all stages will be used. Um, right, so let's just try and uh, remember what these are then. So the first one is going to be A, right, analysis. Uh, then it's going to be D, which is design. Right, then it's going to be C, so coding. Um, then finally it's going to be T, which is testing. Now, there's a couple of ways you can remember this. I think one, um, well, one that I thought of, right, it's going to be all dogs can track. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe you want to remember this, right, so A, D, uh, C, T. Um, I think another one was good, uh, well this one I asked ChatGPT and ChatGPT recommended this. Um, so right, they say always and then right, double check and twice. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I think this one is good because it kind of links in with sort of, you know, val well, validation, verification. Um, yes, yeah, so always double check twice um, and now yeah, maybe you have your own. Right, but if, if we look at those then, um, I mean we see here evaluation, I mean yeah, this is actually not one of the, you know, program development life cycle stages. Um, so we can probably just, you know, ignore that, to be honest. Um, but let's read these on the left. So develop an algorithm to solve the problems by using structure diagrams, flowcharts, or pseudocode. Um, right, so I mean, I think this one is going to be designed, but I mean, let's just read all of them first. Uh, right, detect and fix errors in the program. Well, this should be testing. Uh, right, identify the problem and its requirements. Okay, yeah, that seems like analysis, uh, because in analysis, uh, you're going to be well making a requirements list where you say like we want the program to do and then you know list all of the things the program should do uh, and then we'll write and implement the instructions to solve the problem all right so basically coding um yeah so i think that seems fine right so the the first one then this was going to be design uh the next one fix errors right that's going to be testing uh the next one identify the problem right that's analysis uh, and then you actually code it right so that's going to be yeah coding um, right, identify three of the component parts after a problem has been decomposed. Now, this one, you know, I wasn't really sure what this meant, but um, I mean, I noticed they have used this term right in other papers. So when they say component parts, I think what they're talking about, um, well, it's going to be IPO. And I mean, well, the way I remember it is IPO, right? So input, process, output. Um, and I think for this, they also include right storage as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, let, let's just write some of those, right, so input, um, and I think since it says identify, we don't have to explain, but I mean, we, yeah, we could possibly explain, um, so yeah, I mean, just like inputting the data into the program, uh, I mean, let's just go, yeah, process, um, so this is kind of, you know, the instructions in the program, uh, maybe you're, you know, doing some calculations or you're, yeah, writing to a file, right, something like that, um, and then let's go output. Although to be honest, actually, you know, writing to a file, right, that would actually be considered output. Um, so yeah, process is more really just about, you know, the calculations, right, the, yeah, the processing. Um, and then obviously if we want, right, we could also write storage. Okay, that should be fine. Uh, right, next one, so tick one box to show the name of the data structure used to store a collection of data of the same data type. Um, so this is saying like, uh, I don't know, let's say we want some, you know, numbers like four, five, uh, two, one. Um, Right, I mean, so here, hopefully you recognize, okay, this is going to be an array. Now, if we look at the other, so constant, uh, I mean, to declare a constant, well, we just go, uh, right, constant like this. Um, and yeah, I mean, well, this should be capital letters, really. Um, so let's say like constant, and then, well, let's just say pi, right? And then uh, I think actually for IG, they actually like us to use the, uh, yeah, assignment arrow here. Um, and then we can just go like 3.14. And then what will happen is, well, if you try to reassign this, so if you try to go pi is like, I don't know, 3.15, um, well, then it will give you an error and basically say, you know, can't reassign to a constant. Um, so, yeah, that's the benefit of a constant, right? Once you assign them, uh, then, yeah, no one is able to change it. I mean, a function, of course, well, this is going to be a group of code that's going to return a value. So if you want to calculate something and then, you know, you can, uh, well, you can use that calculation right, either to directly output it, um, you know, or you can use the sort of return value of the function and return it to a variable, yeah, or like use it in an if statement, right, something like that. 
um, and then while variable, hopefully we know, right, just obviously a kind of memory, uh, yeah, memory location that's going to store some data. Um, and obviously, well, to declare a variable, you just go like declare, right, then, you know, the name, uh, right, then the colon, right, and then here's going to be the data type. Um, and I mean, I guess if you want to declare an array, because that's going to be a bit more difficult, um, an array, you're going to go array like this, right, then you're going to have the dimensions. So maybe we want 10 rows. Uh, let's say we want two columns like this. Um, right then we would just say of okay and then the data type so I don't know maybe of string uh, and again yeah let's make that capitals um, but yeah I mean hopefully you're familiar with you know how to actually write all of these in pseudocode um, right so describe what is meant by data validation now I mean there's two well there's obviously right validation verification so while validation this is about checking the data seems reasonable um, whereas verification is checking that the data is actually correct um, so let's say an example, I don't know, like an ISBN. Um, so an ISBN, this is like the kind of ID, uh, let's say the ID number of a book. Um, so if, if you open a book, right, you look at the barcode, uh, yeah, usually sort of buy the barcode, right, it's often going to have the ISBN number as well. Um, and I think the, the most common is maybe ISBN, right, and then, well, 13, so 13 digits. Um, now, like, let's say you have the ISBN, you know, I don't know, just like all ones, and obviously like 13 of them. I mean that's going to be valid in the, in that it's going to be, you know, the correct format, the correct data type, right, the correct length. Um, but probably if you verify it, right, probably it's not going to be correct. Um, and the way an ISBN is going to be verified will be with a check digit, right? So yeah, the last digit will be a check digit. Um, and you can also do things, you know, like double entry for verification. Um, and then for, well, uh, let's say for, you know, sort of transmission verification, you can use, you know, like a checksum or right, things like that. Um, but yeah, so validation then, uh, let's say, I, mean, I, I think they like to say it where it's a check performed by the program. Uh, so let's say a check performed by the program. Um, and of course, you know, these checks have to be uh, programmed in by the computer, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, programmed in, you know, by the developer, right, by the programmer. Uh, right, let's say to ensure, right, the data seems reasonable, or yeah, maybe the input data seems reasonable. Um, and then I think we can give an example, you know, just to explain to the examiner, uh, yeah, to kind of show that we know what we're talking about. Um, so let's say, for example, um, and then we can mention, uh, let's say, format check, um, or let's say type check, and maybe let's just go length check. Uh, right, yeah, let's go, etc. Um, I mean, so format check, well, it's just checking, you know, is it in the correct format? So something like an email address. Well, an email address, you know, you're going to have, uh, say, a list of uh, maybe alphanumeric characters. Um, so obviously, yeah, letters, uh, numbers. I right? also think maybe underscore, uh, yeah, well, let's say underscore or hyphen, things like that. Um, you know, then, of course, you're going to have an at symbol, right? And, you know, then you're going to have some more, you know, alphanumeric, right, underscore, um, yeah, hyphens, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, these kind of things. Um, so that's going to be a format check. I mean, type is just checking, well, is it the correct data type, right? So is it an integer, is it a string, is it a real, right, etc. Um, and then, I mean, length, well, this will be for a string. So let's say like a password, you want to say, well, the password should be at least eight characters, right? So you're checking the length is, you know, greater than or equal to eight. Um, and then let's say well, if you want to do kind of like a similar thing, um, but if for numbers, right? So for numbers, it's going to be a range check. And a range check, maybe you want to check that, uh, let's say, a score, or right? so maybe some exam score, right? That can be between zero and 100, for example. Um, obviously, like minus one is going to be invalid, you know, 101, right? Also invalid. Um, so, yeah, here it kind of says this uh, validation check is used to make sure that any value that is input is an integer between 30 and 200 inclusive. Uh, right, give one example each, each type of test data to check that the validation check is working as intended. Uh, right, each example of test data must be different. Uh, yeah, give a reason for each of your choices. Um, all right, so let's say normal. I mean, normal is just going to be like valid data. So let's say 100. And the reason, uh, let's say 100, right, is within the range. All uh, right, so within the range, and then what, 30 to 200? Um, right, if we say abnormal, well, abnormal is going to be invalid. So we could choose, you know, 29, 201. Uh, you know, 500, 
Um, I mean, I think for me, let's just go 201. Right, so let's say 201 is, is outside the range. Uh, yeah, maybe outside the acceptable range. Um, and yeah, well, let, let's just list that again, right? You know, t uh, sorry, right, 30 to 200. Um, right then, extreme. So this is going to be either the smallest that's accepted or the biggest that's accepted. So in this, uh, yeah, okay, so here, because it says inclusive, well, inclusive means that 30 would be, you know, the smallest extreme. Uh, 200 is going to be, yeah, kind of the maximum extreme. Now, if it said exclusive, right, exclusive means that, well, 30 and 200 wouldn't be accepted. Um, or yeah, you know, they wouldn't be kind of valid. Um, so in that case then, well, if it was, uh, yeah, if it was exclusive, right, the extreme values would then be 31, right, and 199. Because again, this would be uh, sort of the smallest value that's, you know, accepted. Um, yeah, this would be the biggest value that's accepted. Um, but I mean here, well, let's, let's just say 30. Uh, let's say, I mean, yeah, 30 is the smallest value. Uh, right, the smallest value that the program should accept. Um, right, okay, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, right, so explain the purpose of the library routines div and round. Um, okay, so for div, what we want to think, uh, that's going to be integer division. So, yeah, let's say that. Uh, right, integer, uh, yeah, integer division. Um, and let's give an example. Uh, so let's say, uh, or yeah, I don't know, maybe this means, um, this means it will return. Um, so I think we can say it will return the number of times that a number can be kind of wholly divided by another number. Uh, right, the number of times Uh, right, that a number, and I think you know another word you can use if you want is quotient. Uh, yeah, I think it's spelled like that. Um, right, so div is going to return the quotient. So again, this is the number of times you can you know wholly divide the number. Um, whereas if we have the other one mod, well, right, so mod is modulus, um, and mod is going to return the remainder. Um, so right, yeah, the number of times that a number. Uh, right can be uh, let's say yeah wholly uh, divided by another um, yeah or maybe another number um, and well let's say right eg uh, let's say div um, I don't know maybe let's go I don't know like five and two um, right so if we think here well I mean if we do five divided by two that's going to be two point five. So if we're only focusing on the quotient, okay, so I mean, when we say the quotient, right, we're only focusing on the whole part. Um, so that's just going to equal two. Now, in this case here, well, the remainder will be one because if we have uh, five, well, we can divide it by two um, and then we're going to have one remaining. Um, yeah, and, and again, I mean, if, if this is confusing, I mean, I think the easiest example to think of is pizza. So if you have five people, uh, sorry, okay, if you have five, you know, slices of pizza and you have two people, well, then you say, right, each person will get two slices of pizza um, and then there'll be one slice of pizza remaining, right? So, yeah, that one slice of pizza remaining, uh, that will be the mod calculation. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the easiest way to remember it. Right, and then, I mean, the round, uh, so we can say, well, uh, yeah, I know, yeah, this will round a number. Uh, right, hang on, yeah, this will round a number, um, right, to a given number of decimal places. Um, and again, let's give an example, right, so e.g., uh, maybe round, um, and let's say like, I don't know, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then here, so this second parameter is two, right? So here we're saying, well, we want to round, yeah, 123.456 to two decimal places. Um, and then if we think, well, that's going to equal, what, 123? Uh, and then I guess, yeah, this will go to four, six. Um, okay. 
And I mean, if you want, you know, of course you, you can try this on the website. Uh, so let's just do it quickly. Um, right, let's go output, we'll just go round. Uh, let's go one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and let's say we want to round it to three decimal places. Um, right, of course, well, then it's going to be like that. And I think I might actually do it in a loop uh, just to actually demonstrate. Um, I mean, yeah, well, let, let's call it N. Right, so N is just going to be the number of decimal places. And let's say first we want to start at six. Um, so let's go six. And then if you remember to loop down, well, we can then go, uh, let's say, two, zero. Okay, but we need a step of minus one. Um, so that means that uh, each time in the loop, right, it's going to go, uh, hang on. So, you know, rather than incrementing by one, okay, it's actually going to decrement by one uh, each time in the loop. Um, and then if we just put N here, right, so first it's going to round to six decimal places, right, then five, then four, then uh, three, two, one, zero. Um, right, okay, yeah, then let's just go next N. Um, and yeah, okay, so you can see how this is working. Um, and of course, if you want, you can also, tr uh, yeah, you can also play with like div mod, um, but I think I won't do that here. Okay, you can try that yourself, right, if you want. Um, right, so number five, an algorithm has been written in pseudocode to allow some numbers to be input. All the positive numbers that are input are totaled and this total is output at the end, right? An input of zero stops the algorithm. Uh, okay, so identify the four errors in the pseudocode and suggest a correction for each error. Um, so I think here, like before I start writing down errors, I mean, I like to try and find all of the four errors first. Um, so let's just go through line by line. Uh, right, so we assign one to exit. I mean, that seems okay. Um, right, then we say while exit is not equal to zero. Um, and I mean, let's think, right, will this start? So first we assign exit one. Okay, so then we get exit not equal to zero. Well, here one not equal to zero. Okay, so this is true. Um, so yeah, th this means it will go inside the loop. Okay, so that seems fine. Uh, right, then we input the number. Right, then we check if number is less than zero. Right, so if the number is negative. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to do our well, total as well, total plus number, right? So we're just adding to the total. Um, however, if you see here, well, here we want to add the positive numbers, right? But this is actually checking what if it's negative. Um, so, of course, I mean, this one we can, yeah, right, right. Uh, this should be greater than. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this can probably be our first error, you know, which we can write in a minute. Uh, but, I mean, this total plus number, that seems okay, uh, right? So else if number equals zero, uh, right then exit we assign that to one I mean so I think here this is the problem right because while well, we assign exit to one here uh, then we also assign it one here so in effect exit is not changing and I mean if you look at the stopping condition um, well the stopping condition will be when exit is equal to zero because what this is saying is saying well you know do the loop while exit is not equal to zero uh, therefore when exit is zero you know that's when it will actually stop the loop um, so I think, yeah, this one should be zero. Uh, right, so then we have, an, well, so we have an if, we have an end if, that seems okay, right, if, uh, yeah, end if. Uh, but then if we look here, we have a while, right, and then end if. Uh, so of course, yeah, this should be an end while. Um, right, then the last one, the total value of your numbers is number. Now, if we look, well, number, this is the thing they're inputting, right, so I think this here should be total. Um, right, so let, let's just try and write all of those then, so error one. Um, I mean, I don't know, let's say like, yeah, if statement, uh, let's say if statement is checking, uh, right, so if statement is checking if, yeah, number is less than zero, uh, or may, yeah, maybe if number is negative. Um, right, so let's say correction, and I think here, I mean, let's write the line number, so let's go line four. Um, and then, well, let, let's just write the correct code. So we'll just go if, uh, and then number, um, and let's go, yeah, greater than zero like this. Uh, so I think that should be fine. Right, then the second error. Uh, so the second error, I think, yeah, that was going to be this one. Um, so let's say, yeah, I don't know, maybe exit. Uh, let's say exit should be assigned stopping value. Uh, yeah, right, let's say exit should be assigned, right, zero. Uh, let's put in brackets, right, stopping value. Um, yeah, let's say if, 
Oh uh, yeah, if the number equals zero. Um, right, so the correction then, that's going to be line 10. Um, and then we just want to go, what, exit? And yeah, just have the arrow and let's just go zero like that. Uh, right, the next one, so that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's going to be this one, right, line 13. Um, I mean, let's just say, right, no end while. Um, right, so, yeah, let's say line 13. Um, and, well, th this one's quite easy, right, just end while. Um, right then, error four, uh, so we can say, uh, yeah, let's say uh, kind of it outputs the number, doesn't output the total. Um, I mean, let's say, right, total is an output. Uh, okay, right, output. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I guess this is quite long to write, but I mean, let's just do it. Right, so output, um, I mean, actually, right, I'm not going to do it, but of course, in the exam, do it, right? So, yeah, the total value of your numbers is, um, and then here, let's just write total. Um, okay, so that, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, right, describe how you could change the corrected algorithm to record and output how many positive numbers have been included in the final total. Um, okay. So I would say, like, if you've never done this, I mean, try to actually program this yourself in pseudocode. Um, so, yeah, just count, uh, well, let's say, like, doing the total of the positive numbers. Uh, let's say the average, the minimum, the maximum. Um, yeah, like it says here, right, counting how many positives. Um, because, I mean, if you've had practice, I mean, this should be quite easy. Because all we need to do, uh, let's say here, you, you know, we can add, like, a count. So maybe call it, right, non-positive. Um, right, we would then just assign that to zero. And then what we would do as well inside here, you know, where we check, uh, yeah, if number is, well, you know, if number is greater than zero. Um, so basically inside this if statement right after line six, uh, then we would just do something like this where we go, let's say count, or yeah, like non-positive is well count and then plus one. Um, yeah, so just incrementing the count. All right, and then obviously since it says output, well, on line 15, okay, just output the count at the end. Um, so let's just explain that. Uh, right, let's say declare a variable. Um, I mean, let, let's call it like non-positive. Uh, right, non-positive. Um, right, let's say, yeah, and assign it the value. Um, so I mean, here probably, you know, declare and assign, right, they're sort of keywords they're probably looking for. Uh, right, assign it the value zero. Um, right, let's say inside the if statement. Um, right, let's say inside the if statement that checks if the number is positive. Or yeah, they maybe, maybe checks if the input number is positive. Um, and I mean here they, yeah, I think here usually they want us to write the line numbers. Uh, so let's say what that lines, uh, yeah, where is that? Um, so I guess we can say here sort of what lines five and six. Um, yeah, I mean, or, or we can just say line six probably. Um, right then, uh, let's say right then, you yeah, add a statement incrementing the non-positive. Uh, right, so yeah, then add a statement. Uh, right, incrementing the number of positive. Uh, right, hang, okay, yeah, non positive variable. Um, or right, and then let's say, uh, I don't know, maybe on line 15. Um, I don't know, we, we can say like output. Uh, and you know, we could have a message. So maybe right, yeah, the number of positive. Uh, right, let's say the number of uh, positive numbers. Um, right, let's say was, and then uh, here we can just go what non-positive. 
Um, yeah, so I think that should be okay. Right, state uh, two features that should be included to create a maintainable program. Um, so when it says maintainable program, I mean, usually while well, comments, all right, you can also say indentation, right? So modules, functions, procedures. Uh, yeah, I think also identifiers. Um, so what well, kind of meaningful identifier names or descriptive identifier names. Um, so I, I think here, right, maybe I'm just gonna say comments. Um, and let's explain that. Uh, let's say to explain. Uh, right, so let's say to explain the functionality of the code. Um, and I mean, like this is not only just for other people, right? This is also to yourself, right? But in the future. Uh, so, right, let's say, yeah, to explain the functionality of the code uh, to others, right? Yeah, and yourself in the future. Um, and I mean, I don't know, like probably that's gonna be enough for two marks. Um, we could just say, right, this makes it easier to Um, I, I don't know, yeah, this makes it easier to, you know, start coding again without making mistakes. Um, I don't know, maybe to start, yeah, confidently modifying the program. You know, uh, uh, yeah, maybe and being less likely to make a mistake. Um, because obviously like if, if you're just kind of like coding and you're not really understanding what the you know what the existing code is doing um, well then obviously it's likely that you're gonna make a mistake um, right so I think the next one I'm probably gonna say use modules um, and then when we say modules well let's put in brackets uh, I mean well right, let's go functions I say functions slash procedures. Uh, right, okay, yeah, procedures. Um, and let's say the reason for this is, well, to, uh, let's say to avoid or limit dupli uh, duplication. Uh, right, let's say to limit duplication, um, yeah, make code more organized. Uh, yeah, I, know. I mean, I would probably say, right, break code down into smaller, like, like uh, let's say smaller, more manageable chunks. Uh, right, break code into smaller, uh, maybe, yeah, more manageable, right, or, you know, easier to understand. Um, right, yeah, and easy to understand chunks. Um, okay, and then I mean, when you say, right, yeah, this makes it easier to modify and test the programs. Um, because if you think, you know, you can test like each function or each procedure individually, whereas if you have some massive, like, I don't know, 500 lines of code, right, that's gonna be quite difficult to test. Um, whereas, yeah, if you have lots of like 10 or 15 line procedures, um, right, they're gonna be easier to test. Um, right, that's, yeah, let's say this makes it easier to test uh, right, and modify the program. Um, okay, so I think that should be okay. Uh, all right, so flowchart. Um, so I think these flowcharts, I mean, first let's read it, okay, try to understand what it's doing. Uh, so we've got a pointer, we assign that the value one, right, then we input a letter um, right, okay, so then we've got some array, so we say, uh, well, is right word, uh, then that's going to be the pointer which we've, uh, yeah, which we've assigned to one. Um, right, so is this equal to this letter that we've input? And I mean, let's have a look. Do they give us the contents of this word array? Um, yeah, so the table represents the two dimensional array word, uh, which stores the first half of the phonetic alphabet used for radio transmission. Right, so for example, well, word, right, row, uh, sorry, row 10, column one is gonna be J, which I guess we can see here. Um, of course, if we have, yeah, uh, row 10, column two, right, that's gonna be Juliet. Um, right, so it's saying, well, uh, well if, yeah, or is, uh, 
right, so saying what, and, and uh, so remember this will be like the letter, right, so like A, B, C, J, whatever. Um, right, so is the letter equal to the letter that they typed in? Um, right, then if it's not, well then it's gonna increment by one. Okay, so then in this case, you think pointer is then gonna be two. So now it's gonna check, well, is the second letter, you know, equal to the letter they typed in? Right, no. Uh, yeah, then it's gonna check, well, is the third letter, fourth letter, fifth letter? Um, all right, and then I guess finally, when they find the match, uh, well, then it's going to output a right, letter, and then you know, like letter C, where it is represented by the word. Um, and then I guess, well, that's going to be Charlie, I think, for C. Um, right, then it's going to output another letter, yes or no, right, input choice, and I guess, yeah, no is going to be stop, right, yes is going to go again. Um, okay, I mean, so hopefully you can see what that's doing then. They're just going to input a letter, and then they, uh, well, then it's going to search for that letter. Um, yeah, well, it's going to search for the letter, you know, in this array. Right, so we want to do the trace table for right, F, Y, D, N. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I mean, hang on. Right, okay. Right, so I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to make this split screen. Um, just so we can actually see the flow chart, right, and the... Um, yeah, and this trace table, uh, kind of on the same. Um, yeah, I'll sort of that at the same time. Um, right, okay, so the first one then, well, pointer, we're going to initialize to 1. Um, so let's just go here, right, 1. Uh, then we input the letter, so that's going to be F. Uh, right, so it is, I mean, yeah, well, so it is, like, sort of 1 equal to letter. Um, I mean, that's going to be false, right, because uh, this first one is just going to be A. Um, right, so, well, then the pointer is just going to increment to 2. Right, again, it's going to be false. Uh, right, then the pointer is going to get 3, uh, right, 4, yeah, 5. Um, then I guess F is going to be 6. Yeah, okay, so F is then going to be 6. Um, so here, when we get to 6, uh, well, so, I mean, here we're saying, well, is word, and then, so this is going to be row 6, column 1, right, is that equal to F? Um, so in that case, that's going to be true. So let's just write this. Uh, right hand, so right, yeah, letter. Uh, so let's say letter F, uh, right, is, yeah, represented by, um, I mean, here I don't have space to write it, but yeah, of course, in the exam, your handwriting is going to be smaller. Um, so it is represented by, and then is that what, Foxtrot, I think? Um, I mean, let's check. Uh, yeah, okay, Foxtrot. Um, right, then it's going to output another letter. So, I mean, let's also write that. Uh, yeah, write another, um, again, right, I'm, I'm not going to write the whole thing, but in the exam, you should. Um, right, and then the choice, okay, so here the choice is Y, right, so that's yes. Um, right, okay, so, yeah, all right, then, then it's going to go back. Okay, so here the pointer is then going to be 1 again. Um, right, they're going to input the letter, so D. Um, then if we think, well, then the pointer is going to go 2, 3, 4. Um, of course, 4 is going to be D. Uh, so then I guess we're just going to output the same. Um, so, yeah, like what letter D um, and I mean, wait, what is D? Uh, okay, delta. Um, yeah, again, obviously in the exam, you know, write down the whole sentence. Uh, right, then we're going to go another. Um, right, and then I guess here they then enter N. Um, yeah, and then in which case here it's just going to stop. Um, yeah, okay, so I think that's, yeah, I think that should be fine. Um, so let's just maximize this again. Um, right, so here then, identify the type of algorithm used. Now, really, when it says the type of algorithm, I mean, basically it's going to be, well, either linear search or bubble sort. And in this case, this is just going to be linear search. Because what we're doing is, well, we're starting at the first element in the array, checking that. Uh, then we're going to, you know, the second element, the third element, the fourth element. Uh, right, let's say describe one problem that could occur if an invalid character was input. Um, right, so let's try here, for example. Uh, I guess when it says invalid, you know, we can think like Z, for example, right? So what's going to happen if they input Z? Um, right, so I, I guess here, well, it's going to get to, let's say, 13, right? So it's going to search all of them, right? Then the pointer is going to go to 14. But in this case, like they, they, well, there is no element 14. So it's just going to crash because, uh, yeah, you're going to get this uh, kind of array out of bounds exception. Um, Right, so let's say that. Uh, right, so let's say yeah, if the character doesn't exist in the array. 
uh, right hand, yeah, character uh, doesn't exist in the array. Um, or let's say yeah, in the word array. Um, right, let's say then. Uh, right then the pointer will go to value 14. Oh uh, yeah, maybe will be incremented to the value 14. Um, right, let's say yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know, right, right, since the array only has 13 rows. Um, right, since the array only has 13 rows, um, right, then the program will crash. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that should be okay. Like, we can be more specific. Uh, so let's say will crash, right, with a... Um, or yeah, maybe right, with an, and yeah, this can be like array out of bounds exception. Um, or you could say maybe like, uh, yeah, an array index exception. Um, and I mean, when we say exception, right, exception just means error, okay, something that will crash the program. Um, right, so the function length, right, and then takes a parameter, uh, calculates the length of a string phrase. Right, write pseudocode statements to store the string, okay, this, the beginning is the most important part in phrase. Um, right, then we want to calculate and output the length of the string and output the string in uppercase. Um, all right, so, I mean, of course, well, yeah, I, I could just write it here, but I'm actually just going to copy this um, and let's just run this on the website. Um, right, so first, I mean, let's just declare something called phrase. I mean, I think in the exam, yeah, you don't have to declare this, um, but I mean, it also doesn't uh, doesn't really hinder you, right, if you do declare it. Um, right, so then is it we just want to output the length of this? Uh, yeah, so just output the length, right, and then just output in uppercase. Uh, right, so let's go length of phrase, um, then finally, let's just go output, and this will be ucase of phrase. Um, so if we think, well, U case is going to convert to uppercase, um, right, hopefully, you know, L case is then going to convert to lowercase. And these can work both for strings and characters. Um, all right, so let's just run that. And yeah, we see 40, and then here we go in uppercase. Um, so yeah, obviously in the exam, okay, just write all of that code here. Uh, okay, well, write the output your pseudocode should produce. Um, I mean, you know, th this one is actually, well, to me, these questions are kind of stupid because, I mean, here, all you're doing, you're literally just counting the number of characters. Um, and, you know, you do have to remember that the, well, these space characters, right, they also count. Um, I mean, so obviously, well, we won't do it because we've done it already, but uh, so obviously, yeah, well, that, right, that's going to be three, right? The space is going to be four, right? The B is five. Um, I, I guess if you count the whole thing, it's going to be 40. Um, and then obviously, well, then you also just need to, you know, uh, well, you need to write the whole sentence in uppercase as well. Um, right, so next one, consider this logic expression, right, not A or B and B, X or C, right, draw a logic circuit and each logic gate must have a maximum of two inputs. Um, okay, so I mean we can see here, well there's going to be an and at the end, uh, so yeah, I guess anding things together, um, but I mean, well let's start with this left hand side. So we want to go not A, so right, the not is, yeah, the triangle, then the circle, um, right, then we want like all B, so let's have an all like this. Um, yeah, and no, I'm to be honest, I'm not the best at drawing these because sometimes my AND gates, right, uh, my AND will look quite similar to the OR gates. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, I mean, that, that's, that's probably too curved to be honest. Um, right, so yeah, that's going to be B. Uh, right, then we want to go B, X, or C. Um, so let's just draw another, another line coming off B there. Uh, right, then if we want XOR, I mean, hopefully you remember XOR is going to be one line, right, then it's just the OR gate. Um, yeah, I think something like that is okay. Um, right, then we just want to add these two things together. Um, yeah, so that, that should be fine. Uh, right, then a truth table from the logic expression. Uh, so for this, I mean, first let's just do the not A, um, and yeah, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit so I can see the expression. Um, right, so here then we just want to go not A, 
Uh, right, and let, let's say the next one we then want to go, well, okay, not A or B. Uh, right, well, then we just want to go, right, B, X or C. Um, and then, yeah, I guess finally we can just add them together, right, which we can do in this Z column. Right, okay, so, uh, yeah, let me just zoom in here then. Right, so not A, well, any, uh, I mean, basically, a zero is going to become a one, right, so just, yeah, one, one, one. Uh, right, and then here we just got four zeros. Um, and I, I think, I mean, like I've said before, you know, when you do these kind of simple, uh, let's say these simple gates, I mean, you should get something like nice and symmetrical like this. Um, however, here, you know, we've got two inputs, uh, right, A and B. So, yeah, this is going to get sort of slightly more messy, right? It's not going to be as kind of symmetrical. Um, or, yeah, there's not going to be these kind of nice patterns, basically. Uh, right, so not A, well, that's obviously this one, right, or B. So, here, the way I do it is, well, I just look for any rows that are going to be true. So, here's zero or one, okay, that's going to be true. Uh, I mean, in fact, all of these are going to be true, right? These, uh, these first four are all going to be true because we've got the not A. Um, right, then I'm just going to look for, well, uh, where do we have a 1 in these? So here we've got a 1 in these two, right? And then, well, obviously all of these other ones, they're just going to be 0. Um, because, it, I mean, at least for me, I find, yeah, I find for me it's easier to look for all the ones that are true, right, rather than going kind of, you know, row by row, like, right, is it true, is it false, is it true, is it false? Um, yeah, just focus on everything that's true. And then obviously, well, anything that's not true is then going to be false. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's how I do it. I'm not saying you can do it row by row. That's fine. Uh, right, next one, so B, X, or C. So obviously, right, B is this column. Uh, right, C is going to be here. So again, yeah, let's use the same logic. An X or when they're different, it's going to be one. Um, so here, well, zero, X or one, okay, they're different. Uh, right, then we've got one or zero. Uh, then we've got, uh, yeah, zero, X or one, all right, in here. Um, and then it means, and well, let's just double check. So yeah, zero, zero, that's the same. It's going to be zero. Right, one and one are the same. Uh, zero and zero are the same. And then yeah, one and one are the same. Um, right, so I, I guess then we're just adding these two together. Um, so let's use the same logic. So we're looking for two ones. Right, so here, they, here they're both one, here they're both one, and here they're both one. All right, and then yeah, everything else is then going to be a zero. All right, so yeah, I think hopefully that's correct, um, as long as I've not made a silly mistake. Uh, right, a database table TV range shows the main features and prices of televisions. Um, okay. Right, give the name of the field that's most suitable to be the primary key and state the reason for this choice. Um, right, so I guess the primary key, I mean, that can be this TV code, um, because yeah, if we look at these, they are all unique. Uh, I mean, some of them are similar, like 90 and 75, where everything else is the same. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, they are all unique, so that's fine. Um, so what's, is it TV code? Yeah, okay. Um, and remember, when it says field, I mean, field just means columns, right? Now, if it says record, uh, I mean, record just means the row, right? And I mean, sometimes they might also call it tuple. So yeah, record or tuple, right, that's going to be row. Uh, and then I mean, you can say field, right? Sometimes they might call it attribute. Um, so yeah, attribute or field, right? That's going to be the column. Uh, so let's say, uh, I know maybe get yeah, all the values. Right, let's say all the values in this field are unique. Um, all right. Right, so the database uses these data types, right, text, character, boolean, integer, real, and then date, time. Uh, right, okay, so yeah, use the correct uh, data type, and then each, right, each data type must be different. Um, so let's say TV code, I mean, well, that's going to be, I mean, well, basically a string, right, so string here is just going to be text. Uh, right, screen size, I mean, let's have a look. Yeah, so that's just going to be an integer, um, because obviously, well, they're whole numbers. And I, mean, I think usually these questions are quite easy, you know, most people can do this. Um, smart TV, well, yes or no, right? So, I mean, true, false, it's just a Boolean. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I, I guess, well, here, right, Boolean is going to be big B. Um, right, then price, I mean, I guess that's going to be a real. Uh, yeah, because it, it's got decimals. Um, so, yeah, price, we can just go real like this. Right, so I think, yeah, the, the last question before the 15 marker, yeah, okay. 
um, right, completely structured query language, SQL query to return the television code, uh, right, screen size and price of the smart TVs in the database. Right, okay, so the three things we want to select, well, we want the TV code. Uh, we also want the screen size, which I guess, right, that's the name of it here. Um, and of course, yeah, make sure you're sort of using it exactly the same. Uh, so like right here, it's big S, big S. Um, I mean, I think in real life it would actually work, you know, with uh, kind of incorrect capitalization. Um, but I mean, yeah, for the exam, make sure it's the same. Uh, right, and then we want price. Um, and yeah, well, then you have price uh, dollars like that. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, now to be honest, I'm not sure you could actually use a dollar right in, in a column name in real SQL. Uh, yeah, maybe you could, but I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, right, so then we want to go from. Because if you think, well, the, the syntax of select, you, uh, you go select, right, then you want the columns that you want to select, or, uh, well, not the columns, right, the fields you want to select. Right, then you say from, okay, then it's the table you're selecting, uh, well, the table or relation that, you know, you're selecting the records from. Um, and yeah, then you can have some condition. Uh, so well, let's go right where smart TV, and I think here they, well, they go yes. Um, I mean, in real life, it's gonna be true, false. But yeah, I think here in the exam, I mean, um, since it says yes in the table here, right? Well, let's just use yes here. Okay, welcome back guys. So in this video, we'll look at the May, June, 2023 paper 21. Um, and again, this is gonna be the 15 mark question at the end of the paper. So if we just read through this uh, to understand what they want us to do. <clears throat> okay, it says a one dimensional or 1D array called days contains the names of the days of the week. There's also a two dimensional array called readings and this is used to store 24 temperature readings taken once an hour for each of the seven days of the week. Right, there's also a 1D array called average temp or average temp and this is used to store the average temperature for each day of the week. The position of any day's data is the same in all three arrays. For example, if Wednesday is uh, index four of days, then Wednesday's temperature readings are also in index four of readings, and Wednesday's average temperature is in index four of average temp. Uh, for validation, well, yeah, the temperature readings are in Celsius to one decimal place, and we need to validate that they're between minus 20 um, and 50 Celsius. Now, uh, well, this says inclusive. So when it says inclusive, this means that minus 20 and 50 would be allowed. Okay, so effectively, you know, greater than or equal to minus 20 um, and less than or equal to 50. Now, if it said exclusive, right, that would mean that, well, these two values, you know, wouldn't be allowed. Um, so we would have to say greater than, uh, yeah, greater than minus 20, right, and less than 50. Um, but yeah, inclusive, we can use, you know, greater than, uh, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Um, so for the actual task, well, we need to input and validate the hourly temperatures for one week. So I guess that's what, 24 hours a day for seven days a week. Uh, then we want to calculate and store the average temperatures for each day of the week. Right, we also want to calculate the average temperatures for the whole week. Uh, we want to convert the average temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit by well, using this formula. Uh, then we want to output the average temperatures right in both Celsius and Fahrenheit for both each day right and also for the whole week. Um, all right, and then as always it says well we can use either pseudocode or program code. We need to add comments, um, and then you know all of these. Uh, I mean all of this stuff here in this kind of uh, yeah sort of light font. I mean basically they've already declared this right, so we won't have to declare these again. Um, yeah, and again, inputs and outputs well, can, yeah, must contain suitable messages. Right? All data output must be rounded to one decimal place. However, here it does say that we do need to initialize and populate the array days um, yeah, at the start of the program. All right, so I'm just gonna show the structure that I've, uh, well, that you know, we're gonna use. Um, so I mean, here is gonna be the days array and notice that it said Wednesday is day four. Okay, so that means that day one must actually be Sunday. Um, so yeah, don't make the mistake of thinking, you know, day one is Monday uh, because of course, well then Wednesday would be day three, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit weird, you know, starting day one on Sunday. Um, but yeah, I guess that's what they've chosen. Uh, right, and then for the array, I mean, 
honestly, we could, you know, we could choose to do it the other way where we have uh, the days as the columns and, you know, the hours as the rows. Um, but I think here this is easier because, well, you know, when we're looping through an array, right, we're going to loop through the columns first. Uh, so, yeah, here we're looping through the days. Uh, so we'll be, you know, let's say day one, right, and then it will go, well, day one, hour one, day one, hour two, or, you know, day one, hour three. Uh, which kind of makes more logical sense, you know, to loop through that way. Um, so yeah, that's what I've gone uh, here. We're going to say days will be the, uh, yeah, days will be the rows, right? And then yeah, hours are going to be the columns, right? Like this. Okay, so like I said, then uh, first let's just input the days, um, or yeah, just assign well assign some values to the. Okay, so first let's do what it said and just initialize the days array. Uh, remember to start Sunday as being day one. So if we just go days, all right, let's go one, and then yeah, this will be Sunday. Uh, okay, and then I'm just gonna copy this. Uh, I think, yeah, that's seven. Um, and then, well, let's go days index two, right, index three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and of course, yeah, just well, type out the days like this. Uh, all right, I mean, well, let's try and spell it correctly. Um, and yeah, I mean, like it says on the paper, right, Wednesday, uh, yeah, just make sure that Wednesday is day four, okay, just make sure you've, uh, you know, started on Sunday, um, and then, yeah, Wednesday should be day four. Right, okay, so I think, yeah, that's the initialization, uh, so then I guess what we want to do, uh, well, then we just want to loop through and just ask them to input uh, into the readings array, um, and it says, yeah, we also need to validate. Right, so here then, well, I'm just going to leave myself space again, right, just to uh, declare some variables, right, which we might need later. Um, so what we want to do, well, we want to loop through, you know, well, the seven days, and then inside that loop, uh, we want to have, you know, well, a nested loop. Um, and, yeah, inside the inner loop, we want to loop through the hours. Okay, so here we're just going to go day. Uh, we'll assign this to value one, and then we'll just say, well, two, seven. Um, and then I think inside here, where well, it says we want a day total, because uh, yeah, I guess we need to calculate the average, right? So that means we're going to need a daily total. Um, and I mean, we could declare it here, you know, or if we want, we could just declare everything up here. Uh, so let's say maybe daily total, and let's say this will be real, um, because yeah, if we look here, right, we can have decimal places, and it does say yeah, temperature readings are to one decimal place. Uh, okay, so let's say, uh, yeah, let's say we want to set the daily total to zero on each day, okay, um, yeah, just to reset this, and then I guess here we just want to calculate, um, and to be honest, right, I'm going to leave myself some lines because, well, maybe there's something else we want to do here, so yeah, just give yourself space, uh, just so, you know, you're able to go back and add things, uh, and then, well, this will be hour one, okay, two hour twenty four, um, and I think before, well, before we use the uh, repeat until loop in order to, uh, to validate user input. However, let's try today and actually use the while loop. Um, so if we're using a while loop, well, either we have to ask an input, you know, before the loop, and then uh, kind of well, while the uh, right while the input is invalid, then we just ask them again, right? Or we can give them a kind of invalid input to start with. Uh, so yeah, we just assign it an invalid value to start with. Um, and then we just can kind of directly have the while loop. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the first method. So, I mean, what that means, and it's probably easier with an example. Uh, basically, we're just going to, well, we're going to ask them to enter the input here. So let's say maybe, uh, yeah, enter temperature, right, four. And then basically, I want to say, you know, four hour one, day one, or something like that. Um, yeah, or in fact, uh, okay, I mean, let's say, yeah, enter temperature for hour one on Sunday, for example. Uh, so, right, let's say hour, and then here we're going to have the hour variable, uh, and then let's go on, okay, and then we're going to have days, and then this will be, well, the day index. Okay, and then here, well, let's input this. And I think maybe let's create another variable, we'll just call it, like, current temp, right, or, yeah, current temperature. Um, so let's say here the current temp like this. And then we'll just have a while loop, right? So, uh, yeah, we want here we want the invalid conditions, 
So I think that'll be well, while current temp is less than minus 20. Uh, yeah, or right while current temp is greater than 50. Uh, so these would be the invalid conditions. Um, and then what we want to do here, uh, let's just say, I don't know, maybe invalid temperature. Uh, temperature, uh, yeah, should, I don't know, should be in range. Right, let's say minus 20 to 50. Uh, let's just say try again, right, something like this. Um, yeah, then we'll just ask them to input again. And yeah, I think that should be fine. Okay, and then what we have to do, well, we then just want to uh, kind of assign this to the readings, or yeah, the readings to the array. So here, let's say this will be the day index, um, and then we just want to go hour, right? And then I think it says we also need to round it to one decimal place. So if we go current temp, and then well, the second parameter of the round function, right, is going to be the number of uh, well, the number of digits to round to, right, or the yeah, number of decimal places to round to, uh, which here is going to be one. Okay, so let's just check. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think we've done this. Uh, right, then we want to calculate and store the average temperatures for each day of the week. So, okay, here we've got daily total, which is fine. Uh, so I think here we can, uh, yeah, okay, so let, let's just close this uh, next hour, right, cl well, close this for loop. Um, and in fact, right, let's also add the current temperature to the daily total. Right, so this should get us the correct daily total, and well, then we just need to divide it by 24. Um, so let's say here, this will be average temp. Right, then we want the day index, uh, because remember we want to store the well, we want to store the daily average temperature, you know, in this array, um, yeah, at the correct position. Uh, right, let's say again, we're just going to round it, and I think what we want is going to be the daily total, right, and then we just want to go what divided by 24. Um, because of course here we've you know plus this for 24 hours um, and again let's just round this to one decimal place um, yeah I think that's okay all right and then I think what we want to do well we just want to then uh, I can't you well just output this in both Celsius and Fahrenheit so right let's try something like this if we go output uh, and we just want to say you know Monday average temp or sorry yes yeah, Sunday average temperature um, and then you know well, the average temperature. Uh, so let's say this will be days, right? Then it will be the day index. Uh, let's go, yeah, average temperature. Uh, here, let's just say Celsius. And right, so here, this is just going to be the average temp of day. Okay, so yeah, quite simple. Um, right, then I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and then, right, let's say this one is going to be Fahrenheit. And then I think here they say what well, multiply by nine divided by five. Um, and I mean, if you want, you can also have this in brackets. Um, but I mean, yeah, it, well, it will also work without brackets. Uh, and then you just want to do plus 32 at the end like this. Now, again, I mean, I will be explicit and just put it in brackets. Um, yeah, just to, you know, make sure the order, uh, the order of operations are correct. Um, however, this shouldn't need brackets anyway. Uh, because, well, you know, uh, I guess it is going left to right, and then, uh, yes, yeah, sort of, well, multiplication is, well, you know, higher precedence than the addition. Um, and, yeah, of course, this is going to do before the addition as well. Uh, right, so I think that's okay. And then, yeah, then we just want to store the average temperatures for the whole week. Um, so, right, I, I think here, then, we're going to want another variable. Uh, let's call this, for example, weekly total. Uh, and then what we can do, well, we say that the weekly total uh, will just be, well, the weekly total plus the daily total. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's fine. Um, I mean, there's actually two ways we can do it, right? We, we could either go, uh, well, the weekly total is, uh, yeah, the weekly total plus the daily total. Right, but then we would have to divide it by, well, you know, 7 multiplied by 24. So whatever that's going to be. Um, right, or we could just do weekly total is weekly total uh, plus the daily average temperature. Um, and then we would just have to divide it by 7, right, because there's 7 days. But I think, well, I'm just going to do plus the daily total because basically here we're going to get less rounding errors. Uh, whereas, yeah, if we're, if we're plusing this, you know, average day or, yeah, the average temperature for each day, uh, well, of course, then we're rounding seven times. 
So yeah, the rounding errors are going to become you know more extreme. Um, but yeah, I think that's okay. And then if I just go next day, uh, and then let's, I mean, honestly, I'm just going to copy this. Um, and then probably let's make another variable. We'll call it weekly average. Right, and then in order to calculate this, um, and right, note how, you know, the week we have to do outside of these two loops. Because of course, well, here this is looping through all of the hours in one day. Uh, here this is obviously looping through, you know, seven days of the week. Um, so yeah, when we've, you know, looped through both of those, right, that's when we've looped through, uh, well, yeah, all the days, all the hours. Right, so I think this one then, this is going to be, uh, right, this is going to be the, uh, I think, yeah, weekly total. Um, right, and then we just want to divide that by, well, 7 multiplied by 24. Because basically, I mean, well, this weekly total has just added up all of the hours, um, which, of course, is going to be, well, 24 hours a day and, yeah, 7 days a week. Uh, so I think that's fine. And then if we just go weekly average here. Uh, right, and then this, yeah, average temperature. Uh, okay, hang on, sorry. Yeah, that shouldn't be the variable, right? This should just be the string. All right, so yeah, weekly average like this. Um, right, and then the variable should be here. Um, all right, I mean, so I think, yeah, maybe that might work. Uh, is there anything we missed? And I, I guess, actually, I do need to round this one. Um, because yeah, this this has already been rounded, uh, but I guess yeah, this one won't have been rounded. Um, yeah, I mean maybe uh, maybe we should also round this as well because we're multiplying. All right, so yeah, let's let's just make sure just to round this. Uh, I mean, th this one, you know, technically we don't need to round because, well, we've already rounded it here. Um, right, I mean, let's, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe let's just round it here, right, rather than doing it, uh, yeah, rather than doing it here, you know, and doing it here as well. Uh, okay, and then one. Um, all right, so let's just recap, check we've got everything. All right, so input and validate hourly temperatures, yeah. Calculate the average for each day, yeah. Right, the whole week. Yeah, I mean, so I think that's everything. Um, so let's just test this, right, just to see if it works. Uh, right, so, okay, uh, right, so here, let's just try 10. Uh, I mean, let's try and give it some invalid. Again, you see it's gone to hour two, which is fine. Uh, let's try like minus 30. Yeah, invalid temperature. Okay, let's try 60. Uh, again, also invalid temperature. Well, let's try 50. Um, and okay, yeah, that goes to hour three. Now, the problem with this, of course, is, well, this is going to take us a long time if we want to, you know, input, well, seven days, 24, uh, 24 hours. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make this kind of smaller. Uh, let's say we've got three days, and here we're only taking two readings per day. Um, and then, yeah, let me just make sure to update this correctly. Uh, and I think I'm just, uh, okay, I guess I can't really do, I mean, I, okay, well, let's just do it like this. Um, or, in fact, I, I guess here I can just easily see. Uh, right, so let's change this 24, and this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be 2. All uh, right, this one is also going to be 2. Um, okay, and I think that's, yeah, okay, and then this, this one here is just going to be 3, right, because this is in, well, 3 days, and then, uh, yeah, 2 readings for each day. Right, I mean, let's try this again, um, and let's go something simple, let's say maybe, uh, and maybe maybe zero degrees and twenty. Um, so yeah, okay, this gives an average of ten. All right, that's correct. Uh, let's say maybe minus twenty and well minus ten. Uh, yeah, that gives minus fifteen. And then let's try forty and fifty. Um, and this says uh, okay, forty and fifty. Yeah, this says forty-five. All right. Then the weekly average temperature is this. Uh, yeah, which I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's probably correct um, if we do this. All right, guys, so I think, I mean, this seems to be working. Um, and what what I will actually do, I mean, obviously here we're doing just, what, three days and then, uh, yeah, two hours. But I did also provide this test data if you want to use this. So let's say here, right, I'm just going to uncomment this. Oops, uh, okay, there we go. 
Um, right, so this will be, well, seven days, 24 hours each day. And then I guess what we can do, I mean, we don't need to validate this um, because, well, here this has been validated already. Now, obviously, in the exam, you wouldn't do this. Um, but I mean, just, you know, just so we can test it right, for what, 24 hours. Uh, so right here, we don't need to input any more. Um, OK, we also, yeah, I mean, we also don't need to do this uh, assigning to the readings. But I guess what we will do is, well, this readings will be uh, the value we're plotting to the daily total. Right, and then let's make this 20, uh, 24, and we'll make this seven days. And I think this one, uh, what this is going to be, yeah, so hang on, this was 24, right? Uh, yeah, this one is also 24, and then the three, that was the seven. Um, all right, so I think that's everything. And then, yeah, if we try and run this. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah, so that seems to work. Uh, Sunday is saying this. Um, yeah, and I mean, honestly, it's a bit difficult to check because, well, you'd have to, you know, add these all up manually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is working. Right now, I guess, well, the next thing then we just want to add comments. And yeah, this shouldn't take too long. So let's say here we're just going to be initializing uh, the days. Yeah, I guess the days array you know, with day names. Um, right, I mean, let's say, uh, yeah, declaring, uh, you know, real variables. Right, this one is just, well, looping through each of the days, uh, looping through all seven days. Uh, yeah, maybe let's say resetting a daily total to zero. Um, and then here, well, let's just say looping through 24 hours. Uh, right, I mean, uh, okay, hang on. Right, look, I'm just going to uncomment this because, uh, right, current temp. Um, obviously, you know, in the exam, we yeah, we want to use this. Uh, well, you, you know, we want to use the actual real code that we would have in the exam. Um, or right, I mean, let's say here, I would say, yeah, prompt uh, for temperature input. Uh, right, then this one, will uh, let's just say validate. So we'll validate temperature. Uh, or, um, yeah, okay, let's say keep asking. Uh, keep asking for temperature until in range 20 to 50. Um, and yeah, that's why minus 20 to 50. Uh, and that's going to be Celsius. Uh, right, this one. Uh, okay, let's say, well, set. Uh, and then, yeah, assign temperature for hour. Uh, for, you know, day, hour. Yeah, and the index position. Um, and yeah, let's say uh, add, yeah, add hourly temperature to daily total. Right, to daily total. Uh, right, I mean, I mean, I mean, again, you know, how much you want to comment is sort of maybe up to you. Uh, I mean, some of these it seems a bit like unnecessary to comment this much. Um, right, so this one. Um, I mean, let's say what, uh, yeah, assigning a daily average temperature. Uh, right, and then this one, uh, um, yeah, maybe like adding, right, all, uh, I don't know, yeah, all daily hourly temperatures. Uh, yeah, two weekly total. Um, so effectively, this is adding, you know, 24 readings for each day, right? Because, you know, the daily total is a sum of all 24 readings. Uh, I mean, I think here we don't really need to sort of have a comment for this output. Um, uh, maybe here, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, let's say... Uh, yeah, weekly total, right, divided by... Um, I mean, what is kind of like the number of readings... Right, number of readings, uh, which is, and let's say seven days, uh, 24 hours. All right, so again, guys, I mean, I think in this video, yeah, that's everything. Now, again, as always, if you have any questions, well, ask in the comments, ask on Discord, and yeah, hope to see you in the next video.